Houndstone may have lost last respects, but that does not mean it's not a monster in the sandstorm still. With access to Poltergeist, it's able to hit incredibly hard, and with that sand rush ability, it's outspeeding pretty much everything. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're on a battle in the OU tier versus Raymond from the Discord server. Go ahead and join the Discord server. It is the best place to go for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battles right now. There is a link in the description down below. Looking at their team, they've got some threats. That Clefable stands out. The Greninja, if it's Battle Bond, that's going to tear through my team. So we've got to make sure we keep Empoleon around for that. Um, and Polo's going to be good for taking on the Ting Lu as well. Uh, honestly, Ting Lu is a tough Pokemon for our team, to be honest with you. So they're going to know that. And I think they lead with Ting Lu. I think they lead with Ting Lu. So I'm going to go ahead and lead off with the um, Empoleon. Or I could go Hippowdon and Whirlwind out. That's that's one way I could go about it. So I think I will lead off with Impo um, um, Hippowdon. And then I'll just kind of go from there. All right, good luck. Have fun, Raymond. And the battle begins, so Raymond's going to lead off with Ting Mu, which is the Ting Lu, as expected, as we lead off with Flump the Hippowdon. So, slow ground types that set up hazards. Let's see who's is going to come out on top. Mine's disappeared for some reason. Completely disappeared. Where's it gone? <laughs> Let's go for them Stealth Rocks. We'll get them up on their side of the field because their entry hazard clearer is Bramblegast, which obviously we can block that. Well, not block it, but, you know, we can go for something that's going to, you know, take care of the Bramble Gas, like the um, Tarantar, for example, but gotta watch out for those Power Whips. So they go for a Spikes. Spikes is obviously a really oppressive entry hazard at the moment. Everything has Spikes, which is terrifying. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow this thing away with a Whirlwind, because they're probably gonna go for another layer of Spikes, but they actually went for their own Whirlwind, I'm guessing. And because we're slower, we went first? Wait, yes? I don't know. Anyway, they go into Clefable, which is not by their choice at all. And um, they get completely dragged out, and we see they've got no Stealth Rock damage. Which either means they're Magic Guard or Heavy Duty Boots. I'm going to assume they're Magic Guard. Um, and from here, what I'm going to do is, I'm tempted to switch out into the Empoleon, but we haven't got Flash Cannon on this particular Empoleon set, so I'm also tempted to go into Slowbro. Slowbro seems like a solid choice here, so I'm going to go ahead and withdraw Flump. I'm going to go into the Slowbro Galarian who, if you didn't know, has a really cool ability, which is called Quick Draw, which is effectively like an ability version of Quick Claw, the item. We also have Quick Claw. Well, we used to have, because they're going for a knockoff, Quick Claw on it, but we don't anymore, so that is unfortunate. So, Buffeted by the Sandstorm is what we are, and they aren't, which means they are Magic Guard, not Heavy Duty Boots. So, I've got a couple of options here. I can go straight for the Shell Sidearm, or I can predict the switch into the Ting Lee right now, and go or the, or, or the Hisui and Gudra. Hisui and Gudra is also good. Um, oh, and I can go for an Ice Beam, but I'm leaning towards making a double here. So they definitely don't want to get hurt by a Shell Sidearm. So they either Terra Steel or they go back into Ting Lu or the Gudra. I think Gudra is probably the better bet because they don't want to get the Ting Lu poisoned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight into Sand Slash here, expecting the Hisuian Gudra. And then we can get a free Earthquake off on whatever we want. So they do go into Wind Waker, which is going to be the Bramble Ghast. Interesting choice. So Bramble Ghast comes in. We're going to withdraw Slowbro, and we're going to bring in good old-fashioned Knackles over here, which is the uh, Sand Slash. So Sand Slash comes in looking all shiny and stuff. Got to, got to love it. Nice and shiny. Um, so now I'm le I'm leaning towards whether to Terror or not. We could Terror Fire and completely blow this thing away, but it is more than likely going to see... They're going to either predict us to switch and go for a Rapid Spin, or they're going to let the Bramble Gas go down. And if we can get rid of the Bramble Gas now, that's going to be so clutch. So I think I will go for the Terra Blast Fire. They have stayed in, which is great. We should outspeed because of the Sand Rush. And we should definitely be able to take out this Bramble Gas no problem. So looking all amazing with our Chandelier on our head. Looking, <laughs> It really suits Shiny Sand Slash as well. That's the thing. So we go for a Terra Blast. They were definitely not expecting this. That is the way Terra should be. It should be for catching people off guard as they live with barely any HP. That is unfortunate, and they're able to go for another layer of spikes. So that is unfortunate right there. However, Stealth Rocks are up to stay because they haven't gone for a Rapid Spin, and now they're going to get taken out by the Sandstorm. So we nearly got them, but they did manage to get another layer of spikes, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. In comes Ting Lu again. So Ting Lu obviously threatens us out with an Earthquake right now. But the stones are going to dig in, and they're going to lower our special attack, not that it matters. So, we've got a couple of options here. We could go into our... Uh, <sighs> what can we even do here? 
We can't do much, can we? I suppose we can rapid spin. That could be useful. Getting rid of those spikes is going to be really useful for us. And it'll also give us a bit of an edge in the fact that we'll have the speed after the sandstorm wears off. Do I really want to do that, though? Or do I gonna go for an EQ? I feel like I need to get as much damage off on this Tinglu as possible. I feel like Sandslash is not our win con looking at their team. So I'm gonna go for the EQ just to get some damage off. Um, because Tinglu is obviously a really big threat to our team. Getting as much damage off and a critical hit as well, that's great. Absolutely perfect. As they go for an EQ and that's gonna take out Sandslash more than likely. Yep, down it goes. Sandslash is getting it doesn't if you're wondering why Sandslash doesn't get hurt by Sandstorm. Despite the fact that it's a fire type right now, or was a fire type, it's because if you have one of the sand abilities like Sand Rush, Force, Veil, you don't get hurt by Sandstorm, even if you're not a rock, steel, or ground type. So now that we've got the Ting Lu in a bit of more of a vulnerable position, we've got a couple of options. We could go into Empoleon and just fire a Hydra Pump at something, um, or we, because that'll probably bait in the Gudra, in which case we don't have a best, we don't really have the best switch in. Um, or we go the Hippo again. We did lose our hazard clearer though. So spikes are going to sting a bit. I think Empoleon is the way to go. So I'm going to go Empoleon. Empoleon comes through. And even though we have a special attack drop from the Vessel of Ruin. I'm pretty confident that Hydra Pump will still take this thing out. So I'm just going to go for it. Grass Knot might do more. No, Hydra Pump stab. That should definitely do more. So Hydra Pump comes through. We do connect. And that takes out the Tinglu. So Tinglu being a big threat to our team. Practically the only thing stopping our Tyranitar from going through and sweeping if we can get up a couple of Dragon Dancers is gone. In comes Manny, which is going to be the Mama Swine, because I named my Mama Swine Manny. Um, it's a good name. It's a good name for a Mama Swine. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. So, I would Terra, but we can't. I would Hydro Pump, but an Earthquake is coming our way. So, what's the best thing to do here? I would say going into the Hippowdon, but then we've got to worry about Sand. I'm looking at their team and I'm thinking, you know what isn't doing much for us? Slowbro. Do you know what is doing enough for us? Empoleon, because it's our only switch in to Clefables, Moonblast, and Greninja's stab moves. Pretty much. So I think I'm going to sack off Slowbro. Slowbro doesn't get to do anything this game, which is a real shame. Um, but it is fine. We can handle it. So we're going to bro slow real quick. There we go. Looking all dapper. Um, we're going to get some spikes damage, which is great. They go for an EQ, which is definitely going to take out Slowbro, unfortunately. But I don't think we made the wrong play there. I think we made the right play. I could be wrong. I, I definitely could be wrong. So they are life orb, which is good to note. And the Sandstorm has finally subsided. So we've got a good opportunity here. We could either go T-Tar and risk taking an Earthquake, but then it just finishes off with an Ice Shard. We could go into our Muttley over here, the um, Houndstone. Um, but I'd rather have the sand up for that. So I think I'm going to go into the hippo, get the long sand up. But by long sand, I mean we've got a smooth rock. And that's obviously going to make the sandstorm last a bit longer. So Sandstream is going to whip up a sandstorm. And then our disappearing hippowdon. I guess it's just too big for the camera. How weird. I have no idea what's going on there. So now looking at their team, Earthquake's going to sting anything. So I'm going to go straight for said Earthquake. Knowing I can take an icicle crash from this thing, no problem. So they are going to terrestrialize. Are they going down the route of going pure ice here so that the ice school crash has a chance of KOing us? They're going to go grass. Interesting. So are they a trailblaze set? That is pretty powerful stuff right there. So if they are trailblaze, they're not. They're just going to go terra grass just so that they can take the earthquake a bit better. But to be honest with you, after life orb and sandstorm, I think earthquake still puts this in a position where it gets taken out by Houndstone. And Houndstone could be the key towards winning this game. We just need to weaken that Greninja a bit. So I'm going to go for an EQ again, just in case. They, but they probably go for it. Yeah, I was going to say. They probably go for a Trailblaze to KO us, um, which is fair enough. But I'm pretty sure Houndstone still outspeeds here. So a critical hit doesn't matter. Um, we get some extra Life Orb and Sandstorm damage. So I'm pretty confident that our Houndstone can definitely take this thing out. Um, so knowing that... Knowing that, we are going to go into a Houndstone this next turn real quick. There we go. Houndstone comes right on in. He's got that Sand Rush, so it doesn't get hurt by the Sandstorm. Also doubles its speed in the sand, which is crazy good for a Ghost type like this. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go straight for that Poltergeist. Hopefully we don't miss. They go for an Ice Shard to get some last ditch dam damage off, which is fair enough. As uh, we go for a Poltergeist, and hopefully we don't miss. So we don't miss, which is great. Paul guys comes through, and that takes out the Mammoth Swine. So Mammoth Swine goes down, which is amazing. Absolutely amazing. That Trailblaze made it a threat, but unfortunately for them, 
Houndstone's just too good. Houndstone is just too good. So I'm wondering what they bring in now. Probably the Greninja, right? In comes Ariala, which is going to be the Clefable, right? So Clefable comes in. Are they going to go for a knockoff to get rid of our Choice Band? That's what I'm thinking. Poltergeist should still do a lot of damage, but if they're Fizz Death, we're in for a bit of a pickle here. So I think my play is to go... I think we still go for a Poltergeist here. So I'm going to go for a Poltergeist. It's also a good way of revealing what item they've got. So they have got leftovers. This should still sting a bit, even if they're Fizz Death. It gets a crit and takes them out. Which means they weren't physically defensive for a start. And that means... Because crits are only like... Aren't, they're nerfed as of Gen 6, I believe. So crits aren't as powerful as they used to be. They're only 1.5 times damage. So there was a good chance of that KO in the Clefable anyway, if it's especially defensive. So in comes Greninja. So this is the be-all and end-all here. We can't afford this thing getting a KO. And I'm not confident that Poltergeist will KO. I'm definitely not confident in that. Houston, oh, Houston's looking good right now, though. And Polion going to have to come in right now just to take any hit this Greninja wants to throw at us, really. It is a shame we got that crit on the Clefable because they could have gone for a knockoff if they lived. And that would have obviously put us at a severe disadvantage. But luckily we didn't. And um, the spikes are going to dig in as they go for a water shuriken. And also prove they are a protein Greninja and not a battle bond Greninja. Which is good to know. So that water shuriken is going to come through twice. Which means they're not loaded dice. And they are going to lose some health from a life orb plus sandstorm. So Greninja is slowly being weakened. All we need to do, really, is we need to get Houndstone in once more. Maybe when... No, no. I don't think that's the right play, Jack. I think we go for a flip turn. I think they withdraw. Yeah, they do withdraw. They go into Hisui and Gudra. It's the only Pokemon they can go into now. So Numelgon of the distance past is going to come in. Looking nice and shiny. Get some stones dug into it. And we're going to go for a nice and powerful flip turn. And we'll see if they're gooey or not as well. That's a good, that's a good point. So they aren't gooey. So they're probably Sap Sipper or Shell, like shell Armor? I don't know. I don't know. So let's bring T-Tar in. T-Tar is it, T-Tar's time to shine right now because the Sandstorm is up. We got a boost in special defense. We can go for a Dragon Dance right now and hopefully be in a good position, pretty much. So let's go for that Dragon Dance. Let's see if T-Tar can finish this off. So we go for a Dragon Dance. There we go. T-Tar is coming through right now. Um, Get that boost in attack and speed. And let's see what this Gudra does. They go for a Flash Cannon. So luckily they're not Steel Beam because Steel Beam would have definitely KO'd us. And now we go straight for the EQ. I think EQ is the best bet. I would love to knock this thing off, but I think EQ is the best bet. So I'm going to go for that. They can't Terra. They've already Terrored, just like we have. Down goes the Hisui and Gudra, which is amazing. So the only thing that can stop in our way for the Tyranitar right now, because the Sandstorm has subsided, is going to be that Greninja. And now, in order to get some sort of um, insurance from this, what we need is for our Houndstone to win this with Poltergeist. We need to get a free switch back into Tyranitar. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into Empoleon. That way we can reset the Sandstorm and get Houndstone in that can finish off the game. Because chances are they're going to go for a Water Shuriken right now. Which is going to turn them pure water. Which means Poltergeist won't be resisted and we can take it out. So they go for a Dark Pulse which is of course going to make them a Dark type. So that's probably the best thing they could have gone for there. Um, nearly takes us out. But we have got enough damage on it now to where I believe Houndstone can take this thing out. Because we've got a couple more life life orbs to come. So let's go for a flip turn real quick. They go for another Dark Pulse to get the KO. Empoleon does go down and that is going to be the game for Empoleon. Empoleon did good though. But I think this is a Houndstone video. I really think this is a Houndstone video. So let's see how well we do here. So let's go Titar. And to be fair, Shadow Sneak could probably KO at this point. But I'm not going to risk that. I mean, it's not a risk. It's, it's, you know, it's one of those things. So we get the sand stream up. They didn't set up enough layer of spikes to get the KO. Actually, they wouldn't have KO'd anyway. We'll go for the knockoff just in case. Just in case they miss. I don't think they can miss, though. Um, as they go for an ice beam, which is definitely going to take out T-Tar. So T-Tar does go down. We still have the Empoleon in the back. But Empoleon does go down to the Dark Pulse. However... If we really, really want to make sure we win this and we don't want to rely on, um, we don't want to, well, nah, we're going to have to go for a Poltergeist, aren't we? Crunch should KO. Crunch should definitely KO. So I'm going to go into Houndstone and this is all going to come down to this. Will Water Shuriken KO us? Because we've got spikes damage. 
And if Water Shuriken hits enough times, you might only need two. Do we go for a Shadow Sneak? Just think, because Water Shuriken's a priority move. Do we go for a Shadow Sneak here? I don't want to risk Water Shuriken hitting more times than it needs to. I, I, I'm happy to risk the Shadow Sneak damage, because we will outspeed because of the Sandstorm. Let's go for the Shadow Sneak. There we go. Shadow Sneak comes through. And it nearly takes out the Greninja as they're able to go for a War Shuriken now, which, looking at the damage, might, if they hit enough time, they hit three times as they go down to Life Orb. And that is going to be the game. So GG Raymond, that's a really close game. Came right down to Houndstone. Really enjoyed that one. GG Raymond, very, very, very well played by you. But anyway, here is the team. If you want to try it out, use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.